Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. Today, I want to talk about uh, nucleic acid detection and identification with microchip-based real-time PNPCR. Our speaker is Dr. Maxim Slidev, head of the biochemical department at Lumex Instruments. Now, before we start, uh, let me briefly uh, do some housekeeping instructions. We'll mute the audience in order to improve the webinar flow, but you can ask your questions during and after the webinar. Uh, on the screen, you're gonna see uh, the chat panel. Please ask your questions in this area. Um, use the tab option and send your questions to the admin. Uh, the webinar will be 45 minutes. We'll leave a 15 minutes for a Q&A session uh, where we'll try to answer as many of your questions as we can after the presentation. All unanswered questions will be answered by email. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Maxim Slidner. Okay. So I think everyone is ready now. So it's 10.59 a.m. in Canada. And uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, or good afternoon to those of you who passed after the noon. So let's start our lecture then. Today I will talk about nucleic acid detection and identification with uh, a novel microchip-based real-time PCR that was developed in our group of companies, Lumex Instruments. And I'm representing Lumex Instruments Canada. So hello from Vancouver, the Pacific coast of Canada. Lumex Instruments group of companies is an innovative uh, research and development and production group of companies. Actually, for over 25 years, Lumex Instruments has been developing and manufacturing uh, modern cutting edge laboratory and industrial analytical equipment. And we produce not only laboratory instruments, but also provide our customers with the most efficient methods. So methods which allow us to analyze um, all analytes you can imagine, or almost all analytes you can imagine, employing the unique features of our product, of our instrument. Generally, Lumex instruments engage in different types of activities. So starting from design and production of instruments, then we have a department that run all analytical method development tasks and support our end users all over the world with application development and uh, user technical support for analytical applications, mostly in analytical chemistry. Recently, we have uh, introduced life science department or department of biomedical investigation. So I'm ahead of this department and uh, we will talk briefly about that later. So geography of Lumex Instruments group of companies is quite diverse, so you can see we have two offices in Europe, one in St. Petersburg, Russia, another one in Hamburg, Germany. And we have one service center in uh, Vancouver and production center as well in Canada. And uh, we have office in Beijing covering China and Asia. So you can see uh, on that map that more than 90 countries are covered by uh, Lumex Instruments uh, equipment and we installed and successfully um, trained the end users all over the world. So the countries market in blue, where we can install our uh, instruments. Uh, on this slide, you can see quite extensive list of our customers, and you can recognize the brand names of many multi, um, multi country, international recognized companies that uh, use uh, Lumex Instruments equipment and methods. So there are many product lines and uh, I should briefly mention the most uh, widely used mercury analyzer, Array 915. The mercury monitor based on that uh, type of uh, Zeeman correction atomic absorption spectrometer of mercury. So we also have standalone atomic absorption spectrometer to analyze heavy metals in all types of condensed uh, samples. Uh, we have capillary electrophoresis machine, which uh, run 
uh, multiple samples and uh, patented technologies is behind that type of instrument. We have a kind of a liquid analyzer fluor up. That one is the fluorimeter and photometer on the one case. We have uh, a set of FTIR spectrometer and one of them is for mid infrared range and another one is for near infrared range. And finally, we have a real time PCR analyzer Ariadna. So that would be a focus of my talk today. So let's start from the uh, motivation behind this project. So why we developed a new uh, real-time PCR machine. First of all, detection and identification of all types of microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, and viruses are important to many fields, including agriculture, veterinary, and healthcare industries. And it's not only to meet requirements or standards of governmental quality control and health programs, but also help us to prevent enormous losses in the economy of all countries. So the PCR became, in a way, a golden standard for many applications in these uh, areas. Enzyme linked immunosorbenta say has been widely employed for detection and the identification of similar pathogens for several decades now. But polymerase chain reactions have been widely adopted for detection of bacteria, fungi, and viruses. First of all, due to its high uh, specificity and sensitivity, superior to that of ELISA. However, if you look at the currently adopted PCR analysis techniques for multiple pathogen detection, they are generally very time consuming. So you have to set up your samples, you have to mix reagents, and they require tedious reaction setup in a strictly controlled laboratory conditions. So that's why it's prone to user errors. And uh, the other limitation which exists for PCR reagents so transportation and storage generally requires low temperature, cold chain, dry ice packs, and so on. So this can affect analysis results if temperature conditions have been compromised, especially for the countries far away from the well-developed uh, well infrastructure of cold chain transportation. Imagine that if it's included custom checks for a couple of weeks and so on. So that was motivation behind the development of microchip-based PCR analysis, and uh, what type of features we uh, would like to implement in this type of analysis. We thought that molecular biology specialists wish to obtain a new quality of PCR diagnostics, not only uh, make it simpler, but make it cheaper as well, make it more robust, make it more user-friendly. So we thought that storage and delivery of microchip visualized PCR reagents. So that's our answer to um, cold chain transportation. So those lyophilized PCR reagents can be transported under ambient temperature conditions. And that will allow us to increase robustness of reagents, user friendliness, and to eliminate user errors. Most application which we thought of generally require about 10 to 15 targets to be determined simultaneously. Of course, there are applications with a lot of more targets. Uh, on the question or vice versa, the application which require a lot of samples against one target. But that could be accommodated. So the application area, which we thought would be possible for our machine is about uh, 15, 20 targets. So then decreasing of PCR analysis time down to 30 or 60 minutes gives opportunity to, uh, first of all, fast analysis. And of course, the next opportunity to make it uh, possible to use uh, to operate under field conditions. So decreasing of analysis price as a result of that may lead to high number of PCR analysis performed in all um, in all laboratory conditions. So I would briefly mention about PCR diagnostic methodology. I hope everyone in the audience uh, more or less familiar with this type of technique. But generally, sample preparation is a prerequisite step. So um, DNA or RNA extraction and purification is required for any kind of uh, PCR diagnostic application. And uh, followed by the PCR itself. So PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. And that reaction of multiple amplification of target DNA fragments catalyzed by DNA polymerase under temperature cycling condition. And of course, during or after PCR, you have to detect the product. So there are two endpoint detection techniques. One of them involves 
gel electrophoresis. And another one is commonly known as uh, endpoint detection technique. They both utilize fluorescent detection of double-stranded DNA. And those techniques can uh, be utilized for qualitative detection of DNA or RNA, or let's say semi-quantitative detection, which is not very um, robust or very precise. On the contrary, real-time PCR is a method of detection of amplicons of products of PCR reaction during PCR reaction. So that's why it's called real-time PCR. And it allows quantitative detection of DNA or RNA right during analysis or shortly afterwards. So polymerase reaction itself, as I said, that it involves uh, cycling. So during the first uh, heating, uh, the process of DNA dissociation, which called DNA melting occurs, then primers, which represent the short uh, oligonucleotide fragments specifically designed for your target, will anneal uh, on annealing stage when temperature lows down. And then during elongation phase, polymerase, attack polymerase, thermal stable polymerase will extend to um, strains of uh, original DNA using uh, DNTPs as a bricks for, for, the, for the PCR. So at the end of this cycle, we got two amplicons, amplicons of, uh, of your target uh, sequence. And those amplicons are a product of PCR reaction. So specific DNA copies synthesized during reaction. They're not the whole length of your uh, DNA or so. But if you circle that, um, then you can get every cycle double amount of your DNA. So when you continue multiple cycles, you will efficiently double or multiply your copies of DNA. So that is the uh, technology behind this. And uh, as you see, the cycling generally takes a long time because of transition um, temperature and transition time is not that fast. So we thought of microchip made of uh, materials with high heat conductivity. That's why in our microchip-based real-time PCR analyzer, rate of sample thermocycling or heating or cooling exceed 10 degrees Celsius per second. So that is really very fast if you compare to uh, polymer-based uh, PCR tubes. So that is exactly the chip which you see on the slides. So it's uh, re re relatively very small and it's made of metal, the metallic compound, which has a very high heat conductivity. So uh, each micro reactor in that type of microchip can be of size of one to 3.6 microliter. In this specific uh, microchip, which I hold in my hand, we have 30 micro wells and the size of the micro reactor is 1.2 microliter. So using this type of very high uh, rate of thermocycling, we can achieve minimum PCR analysis time of 20 minutes. And that I'm talking about 45 cycles of PCR. So since the miniaturized volume of each microreactor, we can decrease significantly uh, PCR reagent consumption. And generally we talk about 0 0.5, 0 0.6 microliter of uh, double um, PCR master mix uh, composition. So we developed the Ariadna, which is the name of our uh, microchip-based uh, PCR amplifier, with two detection channels. So it can do a multiplex, actually duplex, uh, detection in each of microreactors. So detection channel one can uh, detect the fluorescent labels like FAM, fluorescent based molecule, or a cyber green, a very well-known common dye for um, intercalating dye for detection of double-stranded DNA. And the second detection channel can accommodate uh, rocks, which is rhodamine-based dye, or CY5, which is cyanine-based dye in the second channel as a detector. So generally, we uh, provide a microchip with uh, 30 microreactors in it, but it's possible to decrease number of microreactors simultaneously increasing the volume, or vice versa, decrease number of uh, uh, decrease volume of each microreactor, but increase number of microreactors up to 48. 
So let me briefly mention that uh, under development, we have a similar machine, which is capable of analyzing four detection channels. That's why it's called Ariadna 4. And in this case, detection channels can be extended uh, to detect hex, which is well-known die as well. And uh, ROX and CY5 will be split into two adjacent channels. So total number of reactions in one microreactor will be four. So quadruplex reaction are possible. So the rest of characteristics are very similar to what you've seen on the previous slide. The major features of microchip PCR system can be summarized as follows. So due to high thermocycling rates, we can achieve um, very short analysis time in a matter of 20 minutes. The low sample and reagent consumption in a range of 0.5 to 1.8 microliter. So microchip is ready to use lyophilized reagents, like the one which I hold in this hand. So it can be stored and transported at temperatures from plus two to plus 25 degree in a dry dark, dark place. So you can hold it, uh, you can store it under this condition for six months. And um, qualitative and quantitative DNA and RNA analysis is possible running the microchips and our PCR-based machine. And minimizing contamination or uh, laboratory environment after PCR is done, microchip is isolated, so it can be easily discarded and no uh, contamination will arise from the usage of that microchip. And also, if you can see behind me, there is the laboratory space, very confined one, and you can see an Ariadna machine, which uh, next to the 15 inch uh, notebook, it occupies very small laboratory space. So that can be very handy in the confined uh, laboratory conditions, including field analysis. So microchip is not a simple microarray. It, uh, 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 the feature includes specially uh, coated surfaces. And let me briefly show you what type of surfaces is there. So we thought of modification of microchip surface because uh, it will allow to increase user friendliness. And we render the surface hydrophobic and hydrophilic, but locally. So inside each microreactor, we render the surface hydrophilic. Outside of microreactors, the surface is rendered hydrophobic. And then only this type of uh, surface chemistry allows user to relatively easy inject sample into the microreactor without aiming, without uh, hand tremor, without uh, any hustle. The sample can be loaded exactly in the microreactor, I kind of magnetize it to wet the surface inside microreactor. At the same time, uh, the sample stays in the in, inside microreactor within the border of microreactor. It does not spill out as if it will be possible when hydrophilic hydrophilic coating was applied. So this type of spillage may lead to uh, contamination, to cross uh, reaction between neighbor uh, microreactors and so on. And vice versa, if you render all surface hydrophobic, which is shown on that slide, you can immediately see the droplet of aqueous solution uh, formed and uh, the contact and wettability is significantly decreased. So the thermal contact is uh, compromised and temperature conditions would be completely different for that type of uh, surface. So that's why microchip is a very sophisticated device. It can be single used only. So after single use, you have to discard it because the surface chemistry will be, uh, of course, modified during reaction and you cannot restore it in laboratory condition. So our commercial line of products include microchip with lyophilized reagents. And here is an, a short um, video, or actually it's like a sequence of frames, which shows you how the reagents are evaporated or lyophilized during uh, this process. So first we load reagents, which contain all important PCR reactants in it including primer, probe, uh, both primers, probe, uh, DNTP, polymerase, and the stabilizer. After it froze, it looks like icicle inside the microreactor. And then we apply the vacuum, the low pressure. So aqueous molecules evaporate, and you can see how 
the volume is decreased down to some residue. So at the end of the uh, life elizer cycle, you will have your reagents under the matrix of stabilizers. So it looks like glass-like structure at the bottom of the microreactor. And it can be easily dissolved with uh, water, with your sample actually, after you add it to this uh, microreactor, or it can be easily transported under room temperature condition or under ambient temperature condition without degradation of polymerase property. This type of technology have been uh, protected by a patent, a patent named a method of nuclear acid detection by real-time PCR and device for performance the same. Priority date is October 2008, and we filed international applications soon afterwards, and patent is already granted in uh, countries like Canada, USA, uh, most of European Union, Russia, Ukraine, and surrounding countries, and still pending in China and India. So international application date is uh, October 2008, one year after a priority day in Russia. So let me speak uh, briefly about microchip PCR workflow. And uh, we start with the microchip. So um, this microchip uh, with lyophilized reagents is shown on the slide. Then you insert it into the holder and you can see on slide that's relatively easy. Then you apply silicon oil. So first, before any sample is applied, you apply silicon oil. And then under this layer of oil, you add samples. So samples is added, uh, samples are added, and uh, all reagents which are in this every microreactor are dissolved. So when you bring the holder to the equipment, then the holder is loaded into Ariadna. You close the lid and run software. So that is, that's easy. And next situation when you work with empty microchip, that would be interesting for those of you who uh, has in your refrigerators a lot of uh, PCR um, kits. And uh, we start with empty microchip. Again, we load it into holder overlaying silicon oil and externally we mix all PCR reagents and samples in a very teeny quantity. And then you load every sample in these uh, small microreactors. Again, holder is loaded into Ariadna, closing the lid, run the software, and you're done. So here is how it can be visualized. So after closing the uh, front uh, tray of uh, Ariadna, you will have to assign your sample in a template editor, describe what you've got, and in 20, 40 minutes, depends on uh, length of your amplicons, you will get an answer. So then you can uh, analyze your results, print report or export data to Excel or to any other uh, software industry, uh, recognized software to analyze it as statistics or as cross uh, experimental checks and so on. In the meantime, I will uh, present you applications which developed by Lumex uh, group of companies. So we choose several fields of um, application for us, uh, interested from the point of view of economy, of end users and so on. So we had several applications in agriculture, including phytopathogen detection. So different plant diseases can be analyzed using the microchip. We also have applied this type of microchip for genetically modified lines or genetically modified organisms, GMO identification of, again, plants and uh, in food and feed. So that's a requirement for, um, on many national level, it's banned from use or cross-border transfer of this type of um, food and feed ingredients is prohibited or should be reported. So for veterinary field, we developed the microchips for detection of disease of uh, several animals. First of all, we focused on cattle disease, and that is the uh, urogenital disease of uh, cattle. And uh, for viral detection in fish and chicken. So we also had developed two products that can detect multiple viruses 
in fish, for farm fish or for wildlife fish, and for chicken, generally for poultry farm, which run chicken or some other uh, poultry uh, birds. For food safety diagnostics, we developed a pathogen identification chip, which include notorious microorganisms like Salmonella, Listeria, Campylobacter. And uh, we develop an animal uh, microchip for detection or identification of animal derived product in food and feed. Also under our plans are development of allergen ID, that is identification of compounds, which is allergenic to people. Then the life science and medical application is also covered by our uh, team of researchers, by our R&D activity. And we developed a microchip for human disease identification. We started from sexually transmitted diseases. Mostly of them are bacterial uh, diseases. And we also have an application uh, showing human genetic testing. And that specifically about SNP SNPs detection in human genome. So let me start uh, showing Ariadne performance in a direct comparison uh, between our machine and a smile cycler, a third party machine, which is well known because it has claims of fast PCR reaction times. What we did, we use smart cycler machine and run reagents, the third party kit, exactly as recommended by manufacturer. And shoulder to shoulder with smart cycler two was Ariadne machine. And we use exactly the same mixture and just drop a teeny droplet of it into the micro reactor. So Ariadna fulfilled 35 cycles of analysis in 18 minutes using protocol which was recommended by manufacturer. The smart cycler on the other hand finished the job in 60 minutes. So we see here more than three times uh, faster. Uh, the analysis was shortened more than three times. So you can say it's 40 minutes only, but if you run it three times in one hour, that would be much more um, productive or much more high throughput can be achieved in a single laboratory. Uh, next slide shows an example of microchip for diagnostics of urogenital diseases of cattle. I briefly spoke about it and look at the map of this microchip. The microchip we designed, that microchip is designed by Lumex. Uh, microchip uh, holds 10 uh, PCR test kits and two samples, which uh, roughly shown as a gray area here and the gray area here. So 10 PCR 10 kits is included, lifelized inside each of the micro reactor. And of course the software knows where Pathogen A, pathogen B, pathogen C is located. So there is no hassle to um, determine which pathogen is detected in this particular sample. But look at these two columns. These columns include positive control samples and negative control samples. So these type of samples allow us to control and eliminate any operator error and increase reliability of analysis. So all 10 test kits located in these five micro reactors as duplexes, show you that microchip and your operational environment and uh, Ariadne itself are in well condition. So you can proceed with interpreting your results. And negative control, which included as the bottom, uh, bottom line of micro reactors, show you that no uh, contamination occurs in the laboratory and the uh, sample is extracted exactly as it should be and so on. So these two uh, control samples allow to increase robustness of analysis. And look at that small uh, ICS, that is internal control sample. Internal control sample is also added to the microchip, which means you can control inhibition of your sample. So during extraction, you have to worry about how clean your sample is, but PCR will not always show you that. In our case, PCR will show you exactly the answer for that question. So is there any inhibitory compound in this sample? The answer will be no if ICS, internal control sample, will show amplification and vice versa. If something wrong with your sample and a lot of inhibitory compound present 
internal control will show negative results and you will see nothing in it. So you can uh, take actions afterwards. Uh, here is an example of microchip for SNP detection. And uh, this particular example uh, make use of duplex detection channel of Ariadna. So you can see on slide number one that only first channel of um, the human DNA showing amplification, while the second channel shows no amplification. Are we talking about uh, thrombophilia SNP SNP skit, and let's say this particular data for uh, MTHFR uh, 677 CT uh, SNP. So uh, on slide number eight, you will see wild type samples. So only uh, common population people will have this type of um, normal uh, DNA and no mutation at all. On the slide number two, mark B, you will see that both channels has the amplification, which means one of the alleles has mutation in it. So both non-mutated and mutated uh, dyes will appear in detection channel. And vice versa, if the person holding so-called mutant homozygous sample, so both of uh, his or her alleles has mutated, then you will see only uh, dye from the second detection channel while the first detection channel will show zero. So this type of results is easily interpretable in the software, of course, or using um, genetics. <laughs> Any uh, person who experienced in real time PCR will tell you the difference in these results, and it can be easily analyzed as well. Um, on, that slide, on that slide, you can see the results, how the microchip and the software which comes with Ariadna can be used for uh, quantitative detection of bacteria. In this case, we start with salmonella. We diluted salmonella using uh, tenfold dilution in this case. And uh, you see how many copies of DNA per microliter was utilized starting from several billions um, copies, so several million copies actually, and down to uh, singular copies, single copies in that, that case. So then the software allows you to plot the calibration curve and you can see good linearity uh, of uh, cycle threshold values. Then you can see good reproducibility. Each line here represents uh, six replicates. And uh, you can see the detection limit if you recalculate these DNA copies for see if you colony forming unit per milliliter was in the range of several thousands see if you per milliliter. So that type of uh, application can be developed in any lab and calibration plot and quantification of your unknown samples can be done. Uh, software and the hardware allows to use melting analysis. So Ariadne is capable of running um, very slow, but not high resolution melting, very slow uh, gradient of temperature. And you can see that uh, cyber green was used in this type of experiments and good reproducibility of melting peaks is clearly seen from that picture. And TM values across the whole chip is in the range of plus minus zero three degrees Celsius, which allows at least to differentiate between target uh, DNA amplification target amplicons and unwanted side products or primer dimers and so on. Well, let me briefly speak about um, bacteria and fungi phytopathogen detection in potato. That one, the microchip which I hold uh, here, is uh, completely designed to run three samples against seven targets. So the name of those pathogens are listed in the, this table. And using sample preparation, general manual sample preparation in 60 minutes, we can run PCR only in six, 36 minutes. So using this type of sample, and that means in 96 minutes, you will finish all analysis starting from sample to the answer. But imagine that of course, when you run multiple samples, you just need only once extract, let's say 10 samples. And then you run every 36 minutes or let's round up every 40 minutes, 
you will get results of your samples from the PCR alone. So this type of chip uh, utilize, again, internal control, positive and negative control. So it allows to achieve strict control of experimental condition and reagent quality. The end user will see this type of data, but um, that one is for more or less experienced guy in PCR. So we can see a real-time PCR. For negative sample, it stays negative. For positive samples, it should and it is stays positive. And for this type of um, pathogens, we used the specially infected sample. So it shows you all amplification. And uh, please take a note of internal control sample. It's also amplified pretty well in all three samples. On the other hand, the user who is not very much experienced in PCR will get this type of printout report. And the table will immediately show him or her the type of infection which is associated with this particular sample. So description can be set before the analysis. And then you will see immediately positive or negative is there. Then both positive and negative controls are checked as marked. And of course, the same goes with internal control. So if internal control, okay, positive and negative, okay, you can interpret very easily this type of result. So the map of all pathogens on this single chip is also shown. And the printout of report will include the date of analysis, operator name, the serial number of equipment, so on. So it will allow easy uh, recording of this data. So why we believe that microchip will be cost-effective analysis. And this slide uh, tries to explain what happens if we compare microchip with 96 volt plates uh, uh, microarray. And this microarray usually accommodates 25 microliter of um, reagents. So the cost of these reagents will be a major part of, um, of these costs associated with the PCR analysis. On the contrary, on the microchip, you significantly decrease the cost associated with the cost of reagents, although you have to significantly increase the cost of the microchip itself versus plasticware, which used in uh, 96 volt plate setup. But anyway, this type of comparison give you the minimum 60% decrease in price or so 60% of savings. So that's type of reasoning uh, from economy. Of course, it depends on which country we are talking about and then what type of reagents are used here. Is it FDA approved reagents? Is it uh, in-house uh, generated reagents and so on? But generally this type of uh, calculation is um, reliable. So in summary, let me uh, uh, summarize that current technology of Ariadne and microchip-based PCR allows to achieve sensitive and specific pathogen detection. And uh, we successfully have shown that two or three samples per single chip can be uh, analyzed against seven or nine pathogen targets. We generally complete reaction in 45 or 60 minutes. And uh, if we add additional 45 to 60 minutes for sample preparation, it will be a really fast analysis. So we have microchip validated for several applications, including RNA and DNA phytopathogens for potatoes and for some veterinary diseases like fish or cattle pathogen detection kit. We have microchip for SNP detection. We have microchip for animal ID tests and so on. So advantages of this microchip was clearly demonstrated. So time and cost and labor can be significantly decreased when you use microchip or lyophilized reagents. And it's applicable to diverse samples. And we think that large market potential for this technology exists because we have more than 30 installations worldwide, which already use this type of microchip, whether empty microchip or microchip with lyophilized reagents. And there is a lot of interest and ever-growing interest for the technology uh, in many different countries. So thank you for your attention. And uh, I think I pass my word to our moderators.
So to see what kind of questions you have. Okay, yeah, so you see multiple questions, so let me briefly take a look at them. I cannot hear you. Well, okay. Um, so uh, one of our questions here we have is if if we study something that's not a common off the shelf uh, target mm -hmm. organism with Lumex instruments, uh, customize the microchip. Yeah, this option is available. So if we uh, think that these reagents will be ordered from local Canadian suppliers, then we can test them and optimize its production. And then we have to set the minimum um, number of microchips that can be used for this particular application and then go ahead. So we are not talking about one or two microchips, of course, but uh, the minimum, minimum could be as low as two, three hundred microchips. And then we can do this customization. Okay, our next question here. Uh, when you manually load a uh, sample PCR mix on an empty microchip, it takes time. It's a problem in case of sample evaporation until you finish filling all the wells. Uh, Maxim, can we answer this one? Yeah, sure. That That is quite frequently uh, asked question. So let me return back to the slide, which shows the flow chart. And... Uh, yeah, for example, we start with empty microchip like this. So you overlay silicon oil on top of the microchip, right in this uh, small uh, part portion of it. Then about one milliliter of this silicon oil will prevent evaporation of whatever you load afterwards. So this goes first, and then addition of PCR mixture with your sample goes beneath the layer of silicon oil, so through the layer. So generally you use the manual pipeter. So manual pipeter goes, I mean, with your sample, of course, goes through the layer of oil and then you inject samples. So that's how we prevent evaporation until you finish all the wells. And by the way, when you experienced uh, enough after training, we generally have any newbie, uh, any new user who came across this technology after one day training can load a microchip, let me say, in one minute only. So it's not uh, that much <laughs> complicated. So about two seconds per reaction. And then I strongly recommend uh, to use um, uh, electronic pipeter. It's not a robot, but it's uh, a kind of very nice uh, helper. So you use it in multiple aspiration mode. So you aspirate once and multiple dispense mode, sorry. Aspirate sample once and then dispense sample multiple times. So generally, uh, I hold the, this type of 10 microliter uh, pipeter. So it allows to inject a, maybe eight down to up to eight uh, samples simultaneously. So aspirate once, then eight times you click, 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 and then you got your sample done. Okay. Okay, and one more question here um, we have. If I want to detect uh, amoeba, I want to detect amoeba acantho, maybe the Negleria folleri and Balamuthia medrilis, as well as E. coli, this would be used in recreational water. What is the best equipment for this? Uh, yeah, I just let me think. This is names of microorganisms which we don't have in our portfolio yet. 
except of E. coli, which is notorious one, O157, and so on. So I would say that, of course, it's possible. But the question is in recreational water, so you have to focus on processing steps. So sample uh, processing would be a major part of this task. But after you concentrate your sample down to volume, which can be processed for uh, extraction of nucleic acid of those microorganisms, as far as I see, all of them is uh, of DNA nature, let's say. So it's bacterial fungus. So after you extract uh, DNA uh, out of the, those microorganisms, so you can use Ariadna with very high sensitivity down to one uh, DNA copy, genomic DNA copy into single microreactor. So this type of uh, consideration should be uh, done before ahead. And I think that this project is capable of doing using Ariadna. Okay, one more question here we got. Uh, what's the price of each microchip and uh, what's the minimum amount um, that can be purchased? Well, we generally uh, uh, speak of least price as uh, 50 US dollars per microchip. It can be individually addressed if the more the, the bulk purchase is there. So minimum uh, purchase for loaded microchips uh, is about 100 uh, of loaded microchip from our portfolio. And uh, for empty microchip, it's just one box. So the box looks like this. So one box accommodate 25 microchips, 25 microchips. And uh, that is the minimum quantity for empty microchips. And uh, by the way, the price for empty microchips slightly differ from uh, the microchip or microchip is lifelized reagent. So empty microchip costs $30. So roughly 30 well microchip costs 30 US dollars, <laughs> many times by five. So only $1 per reaction, per well. Okay, one more here. Um, is the microchip uh, reusable? Uh, well, it's not. It's not since the, uh, I have shown that on this slide, since the uh, nature of surface coating of microchip is very delicate and reaction condition is quite harsh for this type of surface coating. So surface will change its property. And even if you wash it very perfectly, then microchip will not behave as expected. So only fresh microchip can do. So we recommend discard microchip afterwards and never use it again. Uh, we have one more question here. Um, any possible contamination when manually load when we manually load the sample onto each tiny well? Yeah, that's a good question. That's why I should again refer to this slide. So if uh, we, we, we would load microchip without silicon oil, this type of aerosolation of samples can lead to cross-contamination between neighbor tiny wells, as was uh, in this question. On the contrary, what we do is we overlay silicon oil on top of each microreactor. Then there is no air in between them. So when you inject your sample, there is straight liquid dispensed into each microreactor. And then you run from one reactor to the next reactor to the next reactor without any even slightest possibility to cross talk between them. So this type of uh, cross contamination is prevented by the nature of microchip, by the nature of this hydrophobic hydrophilic interactions and by overlaying silicon oil before you apply any samples uh, on the microchip. Okay, one more here from, uh, from Mr. Smith. Um, can Ariana be run off of 12 volt, 12, 12 volt battery with uh, inverted for field deployments? Currently, Ariadna is running on universal voltage of AC type, so it can be run anywhere in the world, but not on 12 volt batteries. So if this would be a real uh, demand, 
of course, inside this type of AC voltage is converted to some lower DC voltage. So um, let uh, ask our engineers if it's possible to modify and how long it will take. I hope we, we can work from that angle as well. And lastly here uh, for Mr. Uh, Trevor Minhas, um, is there any videos which we can show our customers? Um, yes, there is. Um, you can go on our website or, YouTube, or uh, lumexinstruments.com and also our YouTube page and you can uh, see, a, see the full range of uh, video of Ariana as well. Yeah, sure. And uh, one more here, uh, Maxim. Um, could we use theosulfate to remove the chlorine in water but would not be able to remove uh, ceramic acid? Mm -hmm. um, well, or yeah. the amoeba and other, and other microorganisms. Yeah, I would say that this question is slightly uh, departing from the molecular biology, but anyway, yeah, what I see is that it involves some um, chemical compounds. So it's really difficult to say if you want to analyze amoeba or other microorganism in the presence of uh, this type of chemicals, then the answer is yes, because both chlorine, chlorinated water or sulfate in water will be removed when you process the sample. So when you extract DNA out of this amoeba microorganism, then of course all unwanted infer interferences will be removed during uh, lysis and then washing steps. But uh, how we can define or how we can analyze all this stuff from these two compounds, it's really difficult to me to answer. But yeah, if, if it was about amoeba, then I hope I answer uh, that question. Hey, another question here. Um, does any other company uh, manufacture this type of instrument? Uh, no, we are a sole inventor of this technology. And uh, we are, I mean, if, if we talk about Ariadna, yes, we are the only company which manufacture and sell uh, this type of instruments and microchips as well. And um, lastly here, uh, how much is the, uh, the Ariana DNA platform? Uh, again, list price for international sale is for Ariadna platform for the equipment itself is 20,000 US dollars. So two zero 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 zero. So two twenty thousand US dollars. And then it uh, can be adjusted based on the region or based on the bulk purchase. And we generally prefer to sell analy uh, analyzer with the microchip. So this type of bundle will significantly reduce the price of uh, instrument itself. If you consider buying Ariadna and let's say 500 microchips, then we can adjust the price. I don't have details. I think we can pass this type of question to our sales team and they will answer it more precisely. All right, uh, thank you very much, Maxim. Um, and thank you to all our participants and uh, viewers. Um, unfortunately, our time is up. Um, but all unanswered questions will be answered via email. Um, to know more about this technique, uh, you can call or send an email to the expert, uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Slidev, um, with the information on the screen. Thank you for uh, participating. At the end of the webinar, just a reminder that uh, when the chat option is closed, you will not be able to use that anymore and answer any other questions. So please make a note of the email address and um, please send your questions to Dr. Slidev. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for uh, thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you again. Bye.